Hello, everyone, and welcome to Vehau Inside Business. I'm Nick Peterson, and today sitting with me is Fritjof Detzner. Um, Fritjof is the founder of both Planet A Ventures and Jimdo. Um, Planet A is an impact investing firm, in investing in startups with a strong sustainability mission. And he is joining us here from Falandar at the Sensibility Conference and was nice enough to do uh, an interview with us as well. Um, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Great to have you here. Cool, Nick. So, my first question is, how did you, how did you get involved with specifically this topic? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Planet A Ventures is no small VC firm mm -hmm. uh, here in Europe, and you guys have, have had um, some major successes. What, what drove you to go to this topic of sustainability? Yeah, yeah for me personally, I have, to, I have to go back a few years' time. Um, so, after building Jimdo for 18 years, um, I, I do have the opportunity to travel the world with the TV crew from Deutsche Welle and we did a 10 piece documentary series. And the idea really in the beginning was to, to, to have a conversation with founders that are tackling the world's biggest problems. But um, if, you, if you do that and you, you talk with these inspiring founders, you also have to showcase the problems. And so that journey, which took me 120 days um, throughout Asia, uh, w w was honestly quite a life-changing experience because, um, I don't know, for example, I talked to a farmer in Central India that tried to commit suicide because of the third year in a row, no yield. And, um, um, and, and that's not a single case. That's, that's a region where you can draw the t correlation between the suicide rate of the, of the farmers and the change weather data. And, and, and so I had lots of these experiences and, um, for 120 days and and after a while you you start to see the patterns in the problems and the the, the economy have been we have been building um yeah and coming back from this journey um i learned about scientific evidence when it comes or we're going to talk later probably about it but 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 so to, to me this 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 experience made everything quite personal to be honest um so i think we're all aware of the facts and um, that we need to act and we need to act fast and um that journey really made it much more personal for, for me as an experience as a prototype of a privileged german um and haven't seen so many underprivileged people suffering from the problems um and I sometimes feel like, fuck, I really needed this to, to act. And hopefully this way that other people don't need this to act. But yeah, so that, that made it personal, personally for me to go down that route. Gotcha. And what you guys in, are investing in now, do you have a specific focus mm -hmm. or industry focus on what really needs to be tackled now with uh, mm -hmm. innovation? Or are you industry agnostic when it comes to uh, sustainable climate tech? S second, so we, we do invest in hard and software, and mm -hmm. we, um, I mean, um, when when talking about clean tech, um, basically we have to reinvent everything, right? Mm -hmm. So the way we produce uh, things, the way we produce energy, what we eat, how we get around. So so basically, we, we do, and I, and I think that is. That is what we need to do, but it's also a massive opportunity of our lifetime um, that we have to change everything. And so mm -hmm. um, I think w what was more unique about us is that we, we do put us, we have a scientific team on board, which also decides if we invest yes or no. So we only do invest if things are way better than today's economy. Um, and I think that that is important. And so we narrow it down quite often, which deal we do and which we don't really by the impact potential, because um, if the imp impact potential is not significantly enough, then the science team just says no, and then we just don't do it. Got it. Okay. So you guys are really only focusing on uh, mitigator uh, um, climate tech. So rather than the enabler climate tech, like, and, and you also mentioned clean tech. What, it mm -hmm. always gets me, what, what happened with clean tech 1.0? and why you see the, you know, the big deals going down in climate tech are going to enabling firms that, in full disclosure, I am working for a climate tech enabling firm. Mm -hmm. um, and, but you know, are, are we gonna see this change or are investors too scared to really get into these um, you know, long-term hardware-based uh, industries? Well, I think you probably can compare it to the first wave of the internet and the second one with creating all the unicorns and 
Um, we've seen something similar in, in clean tech and uh, even though I would say this time it's different because um, I would say in some sense it, to, to the di digitalization was something which is nice than than it's happened so far as, and it would be even nicer if it happened a year sooner but this one is not a matter of life and death and um, when it comes to talking about climate and uh, it's it's I mind mean, the problem won't go away mm. that's for sure yeah we need the solutions we need the hardware we need the the, the software for, for to tackle that 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 sort of stuff and so the the urgency like in from my point of view can't go away and won't will it go away so we, we we can discuss how fast the capital is actually going in there but we i think we can't discuss if it's needed or not Gotcha. And do you guys, I mean, because investing in these hardware heavy, uh, real mitigator, mitigating tech, it must be, first of all, they need a lot more funding and then the payout is going to be a lot longer. Do you guys adjust your forecasts like this? Yeah. So we, we've backed that into our portfolio model, how, how, how we do, how we do invest. Um, but secondly, I want to say also, I mean, quite recently we invested in a company uh, C1, where the co-founder was also Christian Forman was was on this university, mm. and um, and there it is a hardware process to produce green methanol more efficiently than before, but the enabling technology is software based. So basically, on a supercomputer, on a quantum computer, they were able to build um, a simulation to kind of run a lot of simulations um, mm. to to find this no catalysis process. And so what we do see is that that software is super important also to create different hardware solutions and that also then, and hmm. right? So it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's not as if you hear methanol, then you would clearly think, oh, it's just only hardware. This is also not true. And, 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 and later down the road, you could think about actually, do, do I own the IP and let others produce the things? Like there, there are different pathways. I just want to say it's, it's not, and only if you hear that doesn't necessarily say it's so capital intensive. Gotcha. Okay. Interesting. So my next question is when you're looking at a potential investment, um, how, how do you quantify? Cause of course they, you know, mm -hmm. they, they might have an LCA that they've done on their, on mm -hmm. their product in, in a simple case that shows how much carbon they could take out of the atmosphere per unit sold, but I mean, it, it gets very complicated when you're going to real, um, you know, absolute impact and then the, the potential climate impact. Mm -hmm. How do you guys ad address finding out what the potential climate impact mm -hmm. of a firm uh, mm -hmm. could be? I think you would f first start <laughs> by accepting the reality that it is complex. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and by doing that, you are saying, Hey, we like, it's just business people. Maybe we are not the ones who can access the impact. And if you acknowledge that and you accept that, then you would, I think, have to conclude that you also include a different form of a, a different sort of people in the process. And to us with, with planet A, we do have fully employed scientists on board. Okay. Right. And that's the difference. Yeah. And, and so we do this life cycle assessment, but more importantly, they also power like Lena, my, my co-founder, who's in charge of the science side of planet a is also a member of the ICM of the investment committee. Right. Okay. So if yeah. things are not significantly better then we just don't do it. And I think that's mm. important because if you try to find a green label afterwards to kind of say the decision we made anyway is kind of somehow green, I think that's not going to change something. Mm -hmm. I think what really matters is that the science has the power to veto things which are not significantly better than today's economy. And that has to also be baked in into the legal structure of, of, of a VC fund. If you take this for real, that's my view. And when, do you guys um, and your science department yeah. complete the life cycle assessment of the product or do you or did it because some of these I could imagine are very early stage they don't have the yeah. ability to pay for this yeah no um, and and then I think that stands out well planet a stands out there because we, we do it so 
Um, mm -hmm. And we not only do it, and we don't only do it secretly in our office, mm -hmm. um, we actually publish the SCA whenever we do invest. Because I think it is important that you talk about the evidence why you do something and um, you, you will find each of the LCAs of the investments we did on our website. You can just browse there and click on planetA.com and look at the portfolio pages and then see the LCA. And um, what we see is that this is of tremendous value also for the portfolio companies because they have an external validation of their own impact, um, which is a huge asset to them, to them as well. Gotcha. And yeah, that's interesting. Okay, because that that definitely is the bottleneck for a lot of these early tech, and you have a lot of VCs that wouldn't um, provide this this service to their potential yeah. investors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think, like, I don't know. I would say there needs to be a strong correlation between the companies which are bringing significant change, mm -hmm. but also being the winners of the financial system, right? So if we don't see this correlation, we will yeah. all have a huge problem. And what we see is that all future regulations is going to be good for the ones who will bring significant change and also probably going to be hopefully bad for the ones which don't bring change or do greenwashing. Yeah. So I, I yeah. think we need to establish this and that that is what we what we prototype at Planet A. And when this kind of ideal established, you know, potential climate impact evaluation, um, I mean, in, we've seen that CO2 or CO2 equivalents have been kind of the, the go-to metric yeah. for these sorts of things. But, you know, not including, uh, it doesn't include the biodiversity yeah. aspect, waste, water. Yeah. Um, how do you envision kind of a, a really a more comprehensive, not just carbon emission? Yeah, no, you're right. Um, um, and I think um, everybody gets CO2 now, right? As, as, as a boundary of the system, and then companies start to have different calculations based on the price, right? And mm -hmm. I think um, this is only partially, like it is stressing one really important <laughs> crisis we have, the, the climate crisis, but we also do have a biodiversity crisis and other crises at the, at the same time. And so um, when we were building the, the diseases around planet A, we more aligned with the the model of Rockstrom of the planetary boundaries with the, all the ah, difference, right? Yeah, I just watched this documentary. Awesome. Um, yeah, and I think it's a ago. great piece, right? Yeah. And um, and bad news, it is more complex, right? But it's yeah. also embracing the complexity in different areas. And I think that's a super nice model he, he puts out there. Yeah. And if you were talking about biodiversity, it's like and 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 if you if you look on like on 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 the planetary boundary system the rate of loss of species is enormous. Yeah. Like it's, 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 yeah. it's in clearly in the red zone on this. Um, and we as a society, I think, don't talk enough about this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's according to, we don't price it, right? We d like 10 years, 20 years ago, no one was talking about CO2 as a price point, yeah. and we couldn't imagine that. And I, I hope we're gonna do go down this route of natural capital uh, which also has a price tag. Yeah. And I know it's tough, I know it's hard to calculate, but if we don't manage to overcome this, I don't think we will be able to include this in our calculations. And this is, yeah, I guess what we have to do. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely, what, what was interesting about the planetary boundaries to me part was actually the water withdrawals and the water part was still somewhat below mm -hmm. that boundary and i just i'm coming from california mm -hmm. i can mm -hmm. say that it's definitely not in within the boundary in, yeah. in some areas yeah exactly so it's i highly guess local yeah i guess that really and your journeys as well to you know the farms that you were mentioning they yeah, yeah so, but on average i guess that's yeah. that's what it is worldwide okay yeah i, I guess um i mean the, the the climate in some regards it affects really all of us also here in germany with the flooding last yeah. year and too much but, water yeah and but but it is like suddenly also coming real for us here in germany that it has these effects in some way the, the climate change is affecting always more the people that are having least resources right because they can't defend themselves um but if for example if you if you're drawing a water resources to do a kind of agriculture somewhere else and then you ship the steak to us here um, the problem, like we don't see the problem here in Germany. And I think that's that, as you said, it's like the other problems are highly local. Mm. 
But for the people living there, it's a huge problem and sometimes a much huger problem than the climate change. Yeah, that's no, that's true. And then, yeah, because when we get into how, how we price things, putting a price on carbon, maybe raising the price of water to what it's valued at, which is a lot more than it is now, then we get into the tricky situation that it affects the, the people, the same people that are getting most affected by climate change, which uh, yeah. you know are the, uh, the, the poorer people in society. So, and they now have to pay more. And yeah, so it's a balance between the, trying to save the climate, which is affecting uh, impoverished people more yeah. by putting prices up which also affects uh, the lower end as well. And that's, yeah, so it's a balance, a tricky balance. Uh, what, what is, um, you know, getting into mm -hmm. what, what do you think going forward is going, uh, that people should really look into? Like books that people should read, of course, checking out um, Planet A um, and your portfolio companies and your resources. Um, but what has what it really inspired you um, to get a clear picture of this crisis we're in? Mm. Mm. I would say two things. To, to me, um, the journey I did for myself, it, it's, it's not another book, it's obvious, but um, mm -hmm. um, made it more personal. And I, I would encourage people, sorry, I'm hijacking your question, I know. No, but, please. Um, if you travel, also use the opportunity to not only to have leisure time, maybe also to understand the problem better. Or if you're somewhere where you know it's a water crisis or so, <clears throat> I don't like look at it or uh, like use the opportunity to see it yourself if you're traveling anyway and not just laser focus on the good things I would encourage people to do. Um, and then I think a good starting point, um, and that's again only like what, what you said is um, the, the Planetary Boundaries uh, mm, documentary yeah. on no, Netflix. It's, it's a good starting point to have yeah. that clearer picture. I think that, that is what <clears throat> I would highly recommend. And maybe to name one book, and that's climate related, is um, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster from um, Bill Gates. Yeah. It's a good starting point because like, he is reducing the complexity of what we have to do in, in, in terms of hey, uh, obviously we need to change um, how we get around, how we eat, how we produce energy, how we produce in general. So he, he, he's making up these buckets, which you then can start to understand and you can start to understand the complexity a little bit better because, yeah, so yeah. I, I, I like that. So, and I think it's a good starting point for people that uh, haven't been in there. Gotcha, thank you. Um, and then last question. You know, this is an interesting one that when we come to talk about sustainability, um, and especially within business, will pe are people, is society going to have to sacrifice uh, s things that we are enjoying now? Or will innovation keep up to allow us to sustain the indulgent lifestyles we're living um, into the future by and still making it circular? That's a tricky question yeah I'm honest. Um, um, I mean we are an investor and in, in believing in technology and, um, and, and I think and hope that we can drive the change which is necessary um, looking at the numbers um, we ne need to act so fast and the later we act the more sacrifices we, we will have to make mm -hmm. um, and I think we're we're missing a huge opportunity the longer we wait and um, the harder it will be to yeah, no, no, not make cuts. Um, yeah, let me let me leave it like that. I mean, like I, I want to sound really inspiring and saying, hey, so, but the, the truth is we need to accelerate so fast, so quickly. Uh, and we've been knowing for such a long time and we know the longer we don't act, the faster then the, the, the change needs to happen. Um, but it's going to be tough. Yeah. And, 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 and not only on that. So, but, but, but I do think that it's, it's quite clear to see, to say that the problems will be there and they will only accelerate and the, 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 the costs associated to the problems and the crisis we see is only going to accelerate. That means the later we act, the more expensive it becomes. And yeah. there's another reason is we do have the knowledge, for example, in Germany and Europe to, to drive that change. We have the universities, 
and we're lacking that speed in transforming that knowledge into meaningful startups and economies and that is a massive opportunity and i think we we need to do like you, you can pick different reasons why we want why we all want to achieve this mm -hmm. um but i really think it's about speed yeah gotcha well thank you so much for job <laughs> cool really. like thanks um, thank you, everybody, for watching, and tune in us to tune in to us next time at Vehu Inside Business. Ciao. <laughs>